y'all doing today, church? That's right, that's right. <laughs> We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Everybody is still wiping their tears. Just give it a minute. We're going to wake up in a minute. Church, I want to do something. Can we give it up for our worship team one time, please? Man, they are awesome, huh? Come on, you can do better than that. Come on. Let's give it up for our media team as well. We couldn't do it without y'all. We see you, Mary. We see you. We see you back there. Hey, let's give it up for our pastors too. Pastor Mark, Pastor Joey, Pastor Mark. We're in a, a series of Thanksgiving right now, and I think it's very important for us for us to be thankful for everyone who sacrifices here. Let's give it up for all our volunteers while we at it. The ones that's in, in children's church right now, needing a lot of prayer. How many of you guys got kids? Y'all got some kids? Y'all know the struggle. Y'all know the struggle. One kid's great. Two kids, eh. Once you get past three, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. That's tough. We got three kids. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor Cody. Hey, if this is your first time here, we want to we wanna welcome you and thank you. Church, let's give it up for all our first time guests. You could have been anywhere this morning, but you chose to be with us, and we really appreciate that. And on behalf of all the staff and all the leadership, thank you guys for coming. We actually have a free gift for you on your way out this morning at the service desk. If you just say, hey, I'm new here, we want to give you a free gift, hassle-free. Uh, this isn't like a car dealership where we're going to try to get all your information and then sell it on the dark web. We could. We just don't know anybody, so we're not going to do it. <laughs> we, we don't have those connections. Hey, we're in a series right now of uh, uh, thanks and giving, and we've just been uh, trying to just reflect and just look back and, and uh, just see what we're thankful for. If you have nothing to be thankful for, uh, you need to slap yourself and wake up because you got a lot to be thankful for. You ain't in a wheelchair this morning. You got both eyes. I don't know if you've ever had a, a, a clogged nostril. It's the little things. You realize how, how, how important one of your nostrils are when you can't breathe out of it and you're trying to sleep. And then your wife's kicking you because you're snoring. And then y'all fight. And then you kick the dog. Dog didn't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying we should be grateful. And we, week one, we talked about some stuff about being thankful. Week two, we talked about some stuff about being thankful. I would love to recap, but uh, I forgot. Uh, and I didn't write it down, which doesn't help. It shows you how responsible I am. We're going to have a good day in church. I can say that. We're going to have a good day in church. Hey, we got some friends from out of state. Let's give it up for Brett and Jamie Landry. They drove all the way to te from Texas because they heard I was preaching this morning. That's right. That's not true. That's not <laughs> it's Thanksgiving. That's why they came. I'm just an added benefit, you know, in my, in my dad's berries up here. So, uh, which I want to talk about. No, I'm just kidding. I got some, I got some stuff. I got some stuff. Uh, it's going to be good. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun today. Uh, my goal today is that you can leave out of church today reflecting on the past, thinking about what God has brought you through. I want us as a church to, to reflect back and say, man, God, you've brought me out of it. Look where I am today. And I just, I just want you to just for a minute just to realize how far you've come. Even if you don't think it's a lot, you got to realize even an inch, it, an inch is great. That's victory. Moving forward is victory. I know some of you today feel like you're moving backwards. But look, by the end of today's sermon, I hope you realize that you are moving forward. That the best is yet to come. We're not one of those churches that, oh, I wish it was like it was 50 years ago. No. We are in the moment and we think the best is yet to come. We don't believe our God did all the miracles back then. We think they're still coming. Come on, you got to be more awake this morning. So look, I'm going to pray. Oh, oh, easy, easy, killer. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to jump into the message today. God, I thank you for every heart, every soul, everybody in this church today. I pray that you speak to us. Holy Spirit, have your way. Uh, help me to get out the way and help you to speak today. God, I just pray that you speak to every heart in here. Nobody's in here by accident or by chance. And I just pray that you move, help us to walk out better than what we came in, stronger than what we came in, um, more confident than what we came in. And we thank you for everything you're doing in our church. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. How many of you guys have bad memories? How, how, okay. let, me, let me ask you, it's a better way to ask. How bad is your memory? Is your, me is your memory like, I forgot to pay the electricity bill bad? And it ain't that bad? I forgot to feed the dog bad. Yes? We got some honest people up in church. Uh, what about I forgot to feed the kids bad? Nobody? Nobody? 
Thanks. I was about to say, man, I feel horrible as a parent. I mean, it was a Saturday when the football game was on. I forgot, you know. Anyway. <laughs> what, what about forget to wear shoes bad? Anybody? Forget? I have a buddy, honestly. This is, I'm not kidding. And Austin, I hope you're watching online. He forgets his shoes. You're right? He's from Pierre Park. That's why. That's, that's right. That's, that's a shot at the pair of portions. Huh? No, seriously, we were literally somewhere one time, and he was like, oh, man, I, I can't come in. And I'm like, why? He's like, I don't have my shoes. We're in Baton Rouge. How do you don't have shoes? We're in the city. You forget shoes? Um, one time I forgot my son. Oh, we're going to be honest in church today. It was an accident. What had happened was, I didn't forget him very long. I'm not that bad of a parent. But we were, uh, I helped a buddy move. So anyway, so, I'm, I'm like, so I told my son, I said, man, I'm going to help Uncle Bob move. He said, oh, he's five. He's like, can I come? Can I come? I'm like, yeah, because Uncle Bob has a son that's eight, so they like to play together. So we, I get to Bob's house, and uh, so we load everything in, in, in my truck, and I'm like, all right, man, you ready to go? He's like, yeah. So my son, Haven's like, well, I want to stay here. So they had some adults at the house, and Bob was like, man, look, let's let the kids stay. You know, we can have some bonding time like men do, you know, grow out some chest hair and talk about stuff. And uh, I'm like, well, that's weird. I don't have chest hair. But anyway, so I'm like, yeah, hey, if you can stay, play, play Legos and all that stuff. So we, <laughs> Haven stays. So we go across the river. We unload the truck. We come back. I'm exhausted because I don't do much physical labor. So I'm tired. I mean, I'm slightly overweight, so I'm hungry. I'm like, look, man, I'm going to just get going. He's like, you sure you don't want to come in for a little while? I know y'all see where the story is going. <laughs> no, man, I don't want to come in. I got to get back home. I'm going to just go. All right, man, I'll see you later. Jump in my truck, driving, feeling, feeling worry-free, you know? I, I'm like, all my burdens are behind me. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Anyway, man, I hope Haven's not watching. No, so I make it. I pull out his driveway, and literally, I'm, I mean, I can still see his house, and my phone rings. And as soon as it rings, I slam on the brakes because it, it dawns on me. I forgot my son. So I'm like, he's like, hey, man, is Haven sleeping? Did I miss something? And I'm like, dude, no, 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 I'm coming to get him. I, I just totally forgot. <laughs> and, uh, but how many of us spiritually, we do the same thing. We just, we forget what God has done. We, we just get busy with life or, or maybe we just double, we just, we, we just forget. We have bad memory spiritually. Or a bad, yeah, bad memory spiritually, a bad spiritual memory. Me no talk good. And I actually did some research on it. Did you know whenever you're an infant, you, your brain starts remembering stuff? When you're, whenever you're in the womb, you actually start dreaming and having memories and stuff, uh, developing memories and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, fun fact. Hey, the brain is also a muscle. You, you, so you got to work it out. If you don't use it, you lose it. It's kind of like a second language. I see some people have a sign language up in here. That's pretty impressive. That's irrelevant. Let's move forward. No, I'm not, that's not, oh, that's not what I'm saying. I didn't say it like that. What I'm saying is it's not in my message. I need to look at my notes. But anyway, spiritually, you have to do that. You have to constantly position yourself to think back on God's faithfulness. And you got to remind yourself and say, hey, he's done it then, and he could do it now. That's the entire, my entire message today is that. We're going to pray, and we're going to go home. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> hey, if you have your Bibles, why don't you go ahead and turn to Exodus chapter 2. Now, I got a bunch of scripture I'm probably going to read today, so if you don't have your Bible, no big deal. We're going to put it up on the screen. So it's Exodus chapter 2, verse 11. And we're going to look at the life of Moses today. Why? Because I said so. I got the microphone, you don't. That's why. Okay? I'm a, <laughs> is that how y'all talk to y'all kids? I'm not the only one. Because I said so. That's why you're going to eat that food your mom cooked. All right, Exodus chapter 2, verse 11. We're going to be looking at the life of Moses. And hopefully today uh, we can get some big key factors for, to look back on, to remind us of some stuff. Today, I want, you, I want to help you remember some stuff. Touch your neighbor, say, remember. We're going to say that word a lot today. Say it louder. Say it with your chest. Remember. That's what I'm talking about. Exodus chapter 2, verse 11. Many years later, when Moses had grown up, he had went out to visit his own people, the Hebrews, and he saw how hard they were forced to work. During his visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews. Next verse. 
after looking in all directions. How many of us, before we about to do something bad, we check around? What about before y'all gossip? Y'all make sure the person ain't in the room. I got, I got, and y'all start whispering. Anybody else? Nobody? No, that's cool. Yeah, I know y'all don't do that. That's just me. After looking in all directions to make sure no one was watching, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid his body in the sand. Dirty. Point number one. Point number one. The first thing I want you to remember. Say, remember. You are not disqualified. If God can use Moses, a murderer, to free his people from the Egyptian rule, God can use you. And I know what you think. Cody, you don't know how I messed up. You don't know what I do on a daily basis. You don't know that I constantly, I, I try to stop, but I can't stop. You don't know what I did. No, 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 no. You don't know what he did. You are not disqualified. Say, remember, you are not disqualified. Say, I ain't disqualified. Not today, church. You ain't disqualified. No matter how much you've messed up, no matter how far you think you've drifted. The Bible says that when, when he died for our sins, when he forgave our sins, he casted our sins as far as the east is from the west. And that's not just talking about from California to New York. Those are some great country, uh, cities in all great countries. <laughs> Should be. Anyway, I was just joking. I think he's talking about the solar system. As far as the sun is from that once a planet Pluto. It's not a planet anymore. Right? As far as the east is from the west. You are not disqualified. Too, I see too many people in church say, I can't serve. I can't get involved. I can't do what God's called me to do because I'm not good enough. I, got, I, I know people who say, I can't go to church because I ain't good enough. Oh, if I walk in there, the, the, the walls will burn down. Brother, if I could walk in, you could come in with me. Trust me. You don't know what I've been. If I could step foot in the church, if I could grab a mic, man, you, better, you are not disqualified, church. I think that's the, the, the enemy's biggest weapon against you is to try to get you to disqualify yourself. He wants you to convince yourself and to convince people around you that, that you're not good enough. That you can't get involved. You can't help serve in church. You can't be a part of what God's doing in Patterson, Louisiana. You're not good enough. That ain't true, church. You got to remember today that you are not disqualified. That your best days are not behind you. That they're ahead of you. And that greater is in me than he who is in the world. That everything you've done, that when Jesus died for our sins, he didn't just die for the ones that we committed yesterday. The Bible says that he's omnipresent. He knows the future. He's there. He's in the future. So he died for those too. So, yeah, he died for a horrible Cody. And guess what? He's dying for me now, all of my sins, continuously. And he knows I'm a mess up. He knows I'm going to lose my temper. How many of y'all ever heard that joke about the ball? Uh, I'm going to say it like I hear it. Husband goes to work, and the boss yells at the husband. Who well, then the husband yells at the wife. And then the wife yells at the kid, and then the kid kicks the dog. <laughs> dog didn't do nothing. <laughs> I don't know why I got to talk like that. But <laughs> it makes the story better, I guess. Say, remember, I am not disqualified. Number two. What's our second one? That's number one. Remember, I ain't disqualified. What's number two? Remember what? Remember who fights with you. Remember who fights with you. Exodus 14. Exodus 14. We're going to move quick this morning. The saints are playing. We're trying to get out of here. I know. <laughs> Exodus 14. Was it 14? Yep, 14, 29. But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground. Dry ground. The Bible says that before Moses and all tried to cross the Red Sea, that that night before they tried to cross, the winds blew all night, parted the waters, and dried the ground for them to walk on. As the water stood up like walls on both sides of them, the people of Israel were able to pass through. That is how the Lord rescued Israel from the hand of the Egyptians that day. And the Israelites saw the bodies of Egyptians washed up on the seashore. You know what that tells me, church? It tells me that, that God knows the battles that I've fought and lost or won, but he knows the battles I'm about to fight. You don't know what God's doing behind the scenes on your behalf. 
You don't know the battles that you would have faced but didn't have to face because he already faced them. You don't know how the enemy's trying to sneak up behind you and ruin your marriage and, and ruin your life, ruin your career, and the devil's fighting them off. Church, you have no idea. You have to remember who's fighting with you. You got to remember you ain't disqualified. Nothing disqualifies you. Now, you may do some stuff, and let me tell you, our God is a just God, and you may do some stuff that, that, that's going to put you in a bad spot because you reap what you sow. And there's consequences to your decisions. Good consequences for good decisions, bad consequences for bad decisions. But you are not disqualified from the calling that God has placed on your life. And you got to remember who's fighting for you. You ain't in this alone. That's why God put you in such a, such a great church with such great looking people. So you don't have to fight alone. I know you want to fight alone. We want to, right? Nobody wants to, as soon as anybody, especially in today's society, society, and especially my generation, we don't do a good job of surrounding ourselves with yoked people. And the Bible says it. Don't surround yourself with the unequally yoked. You want to be victorious, you surround yourself with victors. You want to be strong, you surround yourself with strong people. Too many of us, we're bulls, and we're walking around with these little cats. And we wonder, why am I struggling emotionally? Why am I struggling spiritually? Why am I struggling gener in my generosity? You're not surrounding yourself with like-minded people. You got to put better people around you. And when the enemy's coming against you, that's when you get those people and you say, hey, look, it's, this week ain't a good week. Right here, right now, I need you praying with me. I need you believing with me because the best is yet to come. I, I know God's fighting for me. I don't believe it. I don't feel it. I don't feel like he's fighting for me. Church, it ain't about what you feel. It ain't about what you see. The Bible says that you are saved through faith, not saved through visual representation of stuff. That was fancy. I know. I, I, I'm a wordsmith, people, by trade. But you got to understand that you, you got you to remember, church. You got to remember. Jesus says before he dies, before he leaves, he says, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm going to send you a counselor. Now, what does a counselor do? Do they, often do they tell you something you don't know? Sometimes they do, but most of the time they're just reminding you of stuff that you already know. What about your grandmother when, she, when you go over to her house and she smacks you in the mouth because you back talking? You already knew not to back talk, she just had to remind you. She had to lay some hands on you. Some of this. Just got to remind you, the, the counselor, that's, the Holy Spirit wants to remind us today that we're not disqualified. That, that he's fighting with us, that, that we should have people around us, like-minded people who want to fight as well. What's next? What, next? What, what else do I need to remember? Woo! Somebody needs to read that. Does that say emotion? Oh, but come on, Cody, I'm supposed, I'm supposed to be passionate. Right. I'm not telling you to be passionate. I'm just telling you not to be led by your emotion. Why not? The, why you? It's cool. Look, listen to what it said. Not to be led by your emotion. Once you're in it, once you're heading in the direction you're supposed to be in, you can have some emotion. Anger is fantastic when used in the right context. But when you're kicking the dog, it's not. I'm not an animal abuser. I don't know why we keep bringing this up. Y'all need to change the subject, all right? I got to remember I'm not disqualified. I got to remember... He's fighting for me. And I got to remember not to be led by my emotion. If you have your Bibles, I think we're going to Numbers. You don't have to go there. If you don't want to, I'll go there. Numbers 20. Numbers 20. Numbers verse 20. For, uh, numbers chapter 20, I'm sorry. Chapter 20, verse 9. So Moses did as he was told. He took the staff from the place where he kept it before the Lord. Then he and Aaron, say Aaron, just making sure you're awake. I know some of y'all snoring. I can hear y'all. Aaron, summon the people to come and gather at the rock. Listen, you rebels. Don't y'all get frustrated sometimes? I mean, being a leader is difficult, people. It's, I mean, everybody's a leader in, in some context. And it gets frustrating when you just got this little aggravating whining, wah, 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 wah. Or what about your kids? I don't know if your kid does this, but he'll be like, hey, Dad, Dad, Dad. And I'm just like, you say it one more time. 
I'm going to dad you to the moon. Dad, dad, obviously I'm busy, right? If I don't answer the first 76 times, stop it. Yeah, y'all yell at y'all kids? Anybody? Nobody? Yeah, I don't yell at mine either. But anyway, it frustrates the dog out of me. I hate when they do that. Or like literally you're in mid-conversation. You're like, right, you're like, yeah, so this happened. Today was a long day at work, uh, the boss. And then I was about to yell at you, but I'm like, I'm not yelling at you because then you're going to yell at the kid. He's going to kick the dog. We ain't doing all that. So I just want to talk. I had a rough day. And it's, hey, Dad, Dad. Oh, Paige, I'm just trying to talk to you. Just, you oh. But Dad, 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 I got something to tell you. It's real important. Blah, 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 blah. What? I love you. <laughs> it's, it's always something like that. It's always something. But finally, we agree on something. But hey, we should get back to this. I forgot. Aaron summoned the people. Hey, come, come. You rebels, he shouted. Must we bring you water from this rock? I'm getting tired of providing for you. What do you mean you want McDonald's again? <laughs> Then Moses raised his hand and struck the rock twice with the staff, and the water gushed out so the entire community and their livestock drank till they were filled. So before this, Moses was instructed to speak to the rock. He's like, God, these people are thirsty again. Like, I just don't get it. They just keep drinking and eating. And the people are just getting frustrated. They're like, well, I'm hungry again. I'm thirsty again. And, and I feel like Moses is like, do y'all not get it by now? Like he's provided then, he's going to provide now. Some of you are like, God, where's it going to come from? God, how are we going to do it? And he's like, are you serious? I helped you pay your bills last month. Why am I not going to do it now? And we start yelling and we get frustrated. And God's probably thinking, you little snot-nosed, ungrateful I did it before. Why would Matthew 6 literally says that he clothes the flowers with beauty? That's, that's pretty sweet, huh? That's super romantic. And he says he gives, he gives food to the smallest of the birds. So why wouldn't he do it for you? Why do we think that everything is just so big and so massive and just, oh God, my life is falling apart? I don't know why I was Italian just now, or Hispanic. I don't know what that was. God, was my life falling apart? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what I'm doing up here. And it's just, but we feel like our lives are just so significant. And look, you are. Your life matters. But in the big picture, relax. God is going to provide. That's why one of the fruits of the Spirit is peace. God's trying to give you peace. Why? Because he doesn't want you to be led by your emotion. I see some people on Facebook and they're so emotional. And I look, don't act like you're, don't act like you're better. Don't act like you're not led by your emotion. I ain't going to lie. I never told this to Richard's dad. But I'm coming clean. My first service ever at this church, I'm coming through Bayou Vista. And there's this maroon F-150 in front of me, driving in the left lane. And I'm like, this, no good. Who drives in the left lane? There's a right lane, and nobody's in it. That doesn't frustrate y'all? Oh, act innocent. Yeah, act innocent, sure. Oh, man. So anyway, so I'm in my souped-up minivan, of course, holla. That's right. Started the minivan club, by the way. If any dads are looking to join, talk to me. Got two of us. No joke, there's literally two of us in the group right now, maybe three after. We're going to meet up once a month and do some dad minivan stuff. If you don't have a minivan, you wouldn't know. <laughs> My minivan is awesome. It's, got, it's lowered with rims. Anyway, so I'm behind this guy, and I'm like this. Fly past him. Come, I hit the loop because for some reason in the great metropolis of Patterson, you got to pass up the church and come back. So I pass it up, you turn it, jump the tracks, get to the church, yell at my wife, slam the door, and I look and the F-150 pulls into the parking lot. And I'm like, this has got to be a joke. This is, 
I don't know, really, God? Really. Pastor Cody can't control this temper on the highway. I Look, you don't act like you're better. I know some of y'all at the red light. It turns green in the car in front of you don't move. I see y'all yelling, go! Why won't you go? It's green! You learned that in elementary school. Red is stop, green is go! Whew. Remember, not to be led by your emotion. Say, remember, I'm not disqualified. Remember, somebody is fighting for me. And remember, not to be led by my emotion. Remember, it's great. Passion is great. For you to be angry sometimes in the right context is even great. But we shouldn't be led by our emotion. Some people like, oh, I can't give, I can't give, and the anxiety hits you. And now you're being led by anxiety. Oh, I can't, whoo, there's some dads out there who's like, I, I, can't, I can't really convey how much I love my kids to my kids because they might think I'm a wuss. Now I'm being led by fear. No, 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 no. We can't, we can't be led by our emotions. Some of us t- are tempted to step out of our marriage. Oh, no, 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 you can't be, mm-mm. You can't be led by lust. Come on. The Bible says that in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy we, yeah, that, that, that one. Yeah, you got it. What she said, that I've put before you. That means that Jesus has put before us life and death, blessings and cursings. And he says, hey, hey, choose, choose the life. I'm, I'm giving you the option. Choose life. It's like I said la- the last time I did offering, my son he was eating. He didn't want to eat. And I put a spoon in front of him. I said, you can either eat this or you're going to get this. Choose the food. I, d- I don't want to do it. But out of obligation because I am just and fair, and it's not fair to your other brother who ate all his food, and now you don't have to eat yours, and you get a snack. No, that's not how this works. It's not how any of this works. Life isn't fair, son. Get used to it. Some of us coddle our kids so much, and we try to teach them it's life and fair, and you got this, and you should get this. And No. It's not fair for Haven to get rewarded ice cream when Maverick is the one who did all the work. Why should he get ice That's not fair. And some of us, is, why should you have the blessing when you're not giving? You're not sacrificing your time. You're not sacrificing your efforts. You're not sacrificing your talent. You're not giving back in any way, shape, or form. And you're like, God, where are you? Why are you not working in my life? And God's like, you're not doing nothing. You're just existing. Church, we can't be led by our emotion. I got one more. What's the last one? Say, remember to keep moving forward. Come on, one foot in front of the other. I feel like there was a Christian song. Richard, where you at? Richard, no, I'm just joking. But I feel like there was some song back in the day, no song back in the day about one foot in front of the other. There was? I thought so. <laughs> ah, That's what it was. Church, we got to remember to keep moving forward. You can't keep getting stuck in the best days were behind me. Oh, my marriage used to be so good. No, 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 it still can be. Oh, my kids, man, when they were infants, they were so great. No, 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 they still can be. Oh, my my health. Oh, my health. I don't know about y'all, but I I started recently working out. I don't know if you can tell. Ah. Ah. But the other day, uh, my wife punched me on my back because she's a coward and she wouldn't hit me in the face. She hits me in the back. I'm just just joking. (laughs) She's watching online. I'm just kidding, Paige. But anyway, she's like, yeah, I hope that hurt. And I was. It was very sore. It really hurt. I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway, look, we have to keep moving forward. What scripture we got? We got, are we in Exodus again? <laughs> I kicked the dog. <laughs> Exodus 16. Exodus 16. Chapter 3. So, oh, verse 3. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, verse, y'all know what y'all are doing. Y'all know how to read the Bible. That's great. So up to this point. We have to remember the context of Moses' life, right? So Moses was abandoned, then adopted, and then raised into power, and then killed a man, had to flee. So now he's living his life out of fear. So then after that, he had to step up in courage. 
And, of course, he wrote the Ten Commandments. Like, this man is crazy. If you can go back and read Moses' life, I highly recommend it because then you'll stop throwing a pity party for how bad your life was, right? And so now he's, he, he's so close, man. He's so close to taking the people of Israel and bringing them into the promised land, which we'll see in Scripture that he never did. But he was close, right? Which kind of sucks to live your whole life working for this one goal, never able to achieve it. But what amazes me is that he doesn't live his life like that. He doesn't live his life out of regret, and church, neither should we. Even if we fall short, it doesn't matter. Somebody else is going to pick up the pieces and continue it on, just as Joshua did for Moses. So now we're at the point to where he's freed these slaves. They've been almost murdered by the Egyptians. The Red Sea parted. All of these remarkable and miraculous miracles have taken place in their life, right? And now, what do they start to do again? Whine. Bunch of whiny babies. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There he sat, or there we sat around pots filled with meat, and we ate all the bread we wanted, and now you brought us in the wilderness, and we're going to starve to death. Isn't it amazing how when you think back on the past, all you remember is the good stuff and you don't remember the misery? Yeah, like, I think I'm going to go back to that job. Are you serious? The one you complained about for years? You're going to go back? Well, I, th I think I'm going to jump back in that relationship. Are you serious? She tried to stab you. <laughs> and you're going back? It didn't work the first 70 times. I think I'm going to just one more time. I think, I think this, it, it's different this time. I'm different. It's going to be different. I will smack you in your teeth. Mom, church, are we not guilty of that? Oh, I'm going to go back to my old church. This, this church just isn't working. God's just not speaking to me. I'm going to just, just, just go back. And it's like God says, anybody got, throw me some keys. Throw me your keys, anybody. Not all at once. Easy, killer. I saw some of y'all get real big eyed. You're like, this is my chance. I got some. I'll take some more. I saw a few of y'all was like, this is my moment. <laughs> I've been waiting. Is minivan? If this ain't minivan keys, I don't want them. <laughs> but it's like we're stuck, right? We're stuck in this bondage. We're, we're, we're chained. And it's like God says, hey, here's the keys. He opens the cell. says, you're free. Mic check, mic check. He says, you're free. I've been screaming at it so much it's exhausted. It's like I wish this guy would stop talking. Easy, killer. So he says, here's the keys. You're free. And then we say, no, 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 no. Nice catch. And we say, no, no, no. I'm not ready yet. No, no, keep, keep the keys. I like, I like being stuck in my bondage. I want to say, to Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, right? Like, hey, hey, take, take my yoke because it's easy. Give me your heavy burdens. And we just got these, this luggage and all this baggage and this pain, this anxiety. And we're like, no, 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 no. I got it. I got it. I got it. And God's like, what are you doing? Why do you want to be stuck in slavery? I'll tell you why. Because you can take the man out of slavery, but you can't take the slave out of the man. Some of y'all want this miraculous physical healing, but you're not even trying to have a mental healing or a spiritual healing. And it's like, it's like all right, God, you can have, you can have some of it. You know, I'll give you, I'll stop cursing. You can have that. Oh, but my drinking, I got, mm, I ain't ready for that one. You got, just give me a little while longer. That's why some people are scared to come into church because they're scared of the person they're going to have to become. And God's saying, I, I don't care about any of that. Whenever the Bible says not to be led by your emotions, there's a scripture that says that your heart is deceitful in Jeremiah. But then it goes on to say it says that your heart's deceitful, but God knows, he knows the intentions of your heart. So if you're just in church, 
for the wrong reasons. We're glad you're here. But God sees it. I remember when I was 12 years old, God said, Cody, you're going to preach one day. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm not wearing a suit. <laughs> Back in my day, that's what they wore. The standard's a bit low now, as you can tell. But back in the day, you wore a suit because you were a man of honor. And that means suit, I guess. And I remember telling God, I'm never going to do that because that means I'm not going to have the fun life. Twelve years old, I'm sitting on the a, on a second row at church, a little bitty old church, probably has 60 people in it. Now, this is a, this is a hardcore Pentecostal church. This is one of them loud, People falling down, the kind of church where your family comes one time and says, look, I don't think I'm coming back. <laughs> People shouting in Spanish, <laughs> that's right, get you some, get you some. We were hardcore, hardcore. And I remember I was like, God, I'm not, I'm not going to be the ringleader of a circus like this. I'm not doing this. Twelve years old, I'll, I'll never preach because my life, I'm going to have to give up so much fun stuff. Because that stuff was fun. Church, you'll never have what God has been storing up for you if you don't change your perspective. You got to change your perspective. That's fun. Not remembering what happened. Waking up with a massive headache. Not being able to plant roots and be committed and be consistent is fun. Church, come on. God has given us the keys giving you the keys, shaking, hey, here you go. I've, I've beat hell. I've beat death. You don't have to be scared of nothing anymore. And we're, no, 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 just no, not yet, not yet, not yet. Church, I pray today is the day that you accept your freedom. I pray today is the day that you sit back and you say, God, I just really thank you genuinely from the bottom of my heart. Because I know you already know I don't have to lie to you. I don't have to talk like a church person. I don't have to act. I could just come to you in my raw, my raw form and say, God, thank you. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for taking all of my sins, my burdens. Thank you for freeing me from the slavery that I didn't even know I was in. Now help me change my mindset to where I don't want to go back. I got one little story I want to tell y'all, and it's about an Indian man. Somebody said, uh-oh. <laughs> so you know some stories, okay. You know this guy. No, I was just joking. Uh, my family's actually Native American, pretty impressive. That's where I get this physique from. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I think it's important for us to remember a lot of things, right? We're supposed to remember that we're not disqualified. We're supposed to remember who's fighting for us. We're supposed to uh, remember some other stuff, not to be led by our emotion, to keep moving forward. We're supposed to remember those things, but it's also really important to remember what Jesus did for us. And I think it's also important sometimes for us as a church to walk up to our pastors, Sister Nell, all of the leaders, and say, hey, I just want to thank y'all for what y'all have done. Because the lights are on for a certain reason. We want to thank everyone who gives here, because we're able to, to thrive as a ministry because of it. And I think it's important for us to, to look back at the past and and examine it, to say, man, that was a great, great past. But I think it's also more important for us as Christians to embrace the future. So we should examine the past while embracing the future, but also I think it's important for us to start planting better seeds for our children. That way when our children grow up and they're sitting in these seats, this building's paid off, they don't have to worry about the lights being on. They don't have to worry about anything. When I was 10 years old, my grandmother came up to me and she said, Cody, I'm giving you two options. She's like, you're going to live with one of your uncles. She says, you're either going to live with a mature, wise, mean uncle, or you're going to go live with the fun uncle. And I'm, I'm 10 years old and I got to make this decision. And I'm thinking, man, my, the, the, my, my, that one uncle's real fun, but he moves a lot. I'm getting tired of moving. I really want some consistency in my life. What kind of 10-year-old thinks that? And I think it was the Holy Spirit. I don't think it was this brain because this brain can't think of that. And I'm like, man, I'm going to choose the other uncle because I know that the lights are going to be there. The lights are going to be on. They're going to be in the same house. There's going to be food in the cabinets. Can we live a life to where kids think, about, think the same way about us? Can we have a church 
to where people say, man, no matter how far I fall, I know I can go to Word of Life Family Church because they're good. Say, remember what Jesus did. Church, you can't be a proper Christian with proper perspective if you don't remember the price that he paid on that cross. There was this Indian chief, and I'm not going to reenact or act like, like talk like him. Don't worry. I'm not going to embarrass y'all or myself. <laughs> but he stands in front of his tribe, and he says, we are going to be a tribe of consistency, and we are going to be a tribe of honor. And everybody goes, oh. And they all walk away. What they realize, they started tithing, and they realized that some of the food that they were tithing started coming up missing. So the chief's like, well, this isn't good. So he holds a meeting, and he says, whoever is stealing the food will be beaten with ten lashes. We're going to take you. We're going to put you against that tree. We're going to tie you up. You're going to be defenseless, and your back is going to get ten lashes. Happens again. Brings everybody in. When we find you, you will get beat. Ten lashes in your back. So finally they figure out who did it, and they don't want to tell the chief. They're like, man, we can't tell him. Like, we can't tell him. And, and then finally somebody's like, no, he has to know the truth about who's the robber who's been stealing the food. So they go to him, they say, chief. And they throw the individual on the ground. We've caught him red-handed. This is who it is. It's your mother. She's been stealing to give food to other people. You said you were going to beat him. What's your judgment? What does he do? Dun, dun, dun. He says, I'm a man of my word. I'm a, I'm a just man. I'm a just chief. Tie her up to the tree. Executioner, get your whip. Before you strike, hold on. He goes to the tree where his mom's tied up, and he hugs her. And he says, okay, ten lashes. And he takes all ten for her. And that story resonates with me because I know that God did the same thing for me. That I'm, I'm the man on the tree who's stealing and bad, not any good, never could do anything right, always choosing the wrong decision over the right decision. But he's such a good king, church, and he's such a good God that he comes down from heaven and he says, no, 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 no. That fear, give it to me. That anxiety, give it to me. That wanting to please everybody, no, 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 give it to me. The depression, the lust, give it to me, give it to me. Church, he's standing before you today with the keys to your freedom. Your salvation is great, and that's also that comes with it. But while you're here on earth, he wants to give you blessings. He wants you to choose life. He doesn't want you to just survive. He wants you to thrive, church. Let us be a church that thrives and not just gets by. To where you're not just, oh, well, hopefully tomorrow's better. No. He paid the price so that our futures can be better. And we're going to plant seeds to where our kids' future is going to be better than ours. But we need to remember, church, the price that he paid for us, the lashings that he took, the beatings that he took so that we can experience heaven with him. So with every head bowed, every eyes closed, if you've never experienced Jesus, if, if you have no idea who he is, but today you want to say, Cody, I want that. I want a relationship with Jesus Christ. I just want to thank him for everything he's did for my life. And I want to start, a, I want to start living a life that reflects him. I just want you to raise your hand. I don't want you to do anything crazy. I just want you to raise your hand, and I'm going to pray for you today. Church, let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for dying for me, for taking my lashes, my beating, my punishment, 
so that I could be free. Help me to remember this every day. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Why don't you stand before I bless you and before we dismiss. We need to remember we aren't disqualified, church. Your best days aren't behind you, they're ahead of you. And that no matter what you've done, you could still remain victorious and that God still wants to use you. He wants to use you in this church. He wants to use you in your family. He wants to use you in your workplace. You're good enough. Stop telling yourself you're not. Number two, remember who's fighting for you. Even though the, the, it looks like water's in front of you, your enemies are behind you, the Bible says that my God surrounds my enemies. Don't be led by your emotion. I know you get stuck in traffic and you want to do this, or maybe it was tough at work, and instead of taking it out on your boss, you want to take it out on your family. No, 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 no. Hey, let's not be led by our emotion. Let's choose life. The other one I forgot, hopefully somebody can remind me. Mary, keep moving forward. Good job, guys. Remember that slavery is not where you want to be. Bondage is not where you want to be. He paid the price so that we don't have to be there anymore. And remember the price that Jesus paid. God, I thank you for everyone in this church today. I thank you for the LSU Tigers and how great they're doing. And the Saints. Oh, it's good to be a Louisianian today. God, we thank you for this weather. We pray that we enjoy it. God, help us to leave here today more mature and more reflective. Help us to live a life that constantly looks back, but also embraces the future. Help us to not be stuck in the past. Help us to move forward, God, but I just pray that we're able to every day when we wake up, remember who we are. Remember that we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, set free. No more bondage, no more heartache, no more iniquity, God. I pray that every day we're able to choose life instead of death, choose blessings instead of cursings. And God, I just pray that we start living lives that reflect that. I thank you for every heart, every soul, and I just pray for healing all across this church. You know what I'm saying? We pray. Amen. Thank y'all so much for coming, and we'll see you guys Tuesday night.